ladies and gents, we has a little bit of comedic satire. Satire? Is somebody getting sad and they're having a really bad time with flats? Didn't you help somebody with a satire the other day? Oh, it's so sad to see tires just 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 running oh and spinning and turning and just turning and spinning and some tires just just lay there. Oh, oh you wanna finish your video? All right, go go ahead. Go ahead. No, don't mind me. I'm just gonna sit up here and think about those poor sad tires. Oh. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this comedian right here. Yes, I watch comedian in my comedians in my spare time. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you guys to hear something. Now I'm gonna let him talk. I'm not gonna interrupt till he gets right about here. Because that's as far as I've listened. But I'm going to stop there. Okay? So, y'all, hold on. Not, not a variety when it comes out. Because I think we all have a different idea of what we think is acceptable and what's not acceptable when it comes to jokes. It makes it hard sometimes for comedians and producers. There was a joke I was not allowed to do on television. It was crazy. So let, let me just tell you the, the, the situation. The situation. So, so I wanted to go onto a television show. This wasn't British Gone Tales, it was another television show. I went out to do my audition, and there were two producers with little clipboards. And so I told them what I thought was my best joke at the time. And this was a joke based on truth. About the day I was reading an article in the newspaper about the Paralympics, the disabled Olympics. I turned the page, and there was an, there was an article about paratroopers. <laughs> I was like, is that the disabled army? <laughs> I have a mental image now of a general coming out and saying, You are laughing. And interestingly, and interestingly the, producers the producers of that show were laughing their asses off. And what am I supposed to say? Oh my god, that's so funny. That's so funny. You can't do it. I was like, why can't I do it? Don't make that joke more mean spirited than it is. It's not like I'm bullying anyone. I've just noticed para is in both of these words and I've taken it to an absurd conclusion. And then he said to me, look, 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 I'm not offended. But, but other, other people, people might, might be. And, then and then this puzzles me. Like, like if, if I, I offend any of you, by all means talk to me about it. Because I'll either, I'll either apologize or explain, explain myself because that's not what I'm trying to do. If I hurt, if I hurt your feelings, I'll own, I'll own it. But what I, but what I don't understand is when people, is when people get offended, offended on somebody else's behalf. behalf. <laughs> they're, like, they're like outsourcing <laughs> the offendedness to a call center, center somewhere. somewhere. But they, but they explained further. They said, look, look, look. look. We, would have, we would, have would have let you do the joke a few years ago, but in the current climate, we're careful, we're careful ever since, ever since what, happened what happened with Frankie Boyle. Frankie Boyle. If, you're now, if you're not aware of this, Frankie Boyle, Frankie Boyle is a Scottish, Scottish comedian, very clever comedian. A few years ago, he did a joke. Disability, disability joke got him in trouble. Now, I'm not defending the joke. I'm not analyzing the joke. Maybe it was as silly as mine. Maybe it was more mean-spirited. Maybe it was less mean-spirited. But what happened next is what I thought was odd. So he did this joke. On television. on television. For weeks, For weeks after afterwards, people were talking about it. On the radio, people were like, how dare this man make these jokes about disabilities? This is disgusting! And the newspaper people were like, this is not what we want on our television screens. How dare this man make jokes about disabilities? This is disgusting. Everyone was saying, how dare he make it? He's crossed the line. This is disgusting. How dare he make these jokes about disabilities? For three weeks, people were talking about this. Then last year, the British government cut the disability benefit. No fucker talking. Chat. 
politicians are clever. They cut the disability benefit, but to make it better for public relations purposes, they change the name. It's no longer called the disability benefit. Too offensive. They change the name to the personal independence payment. More politically correct, half as much money. I guarantee you disabled people would rather you double the money called the hop, skip, and jump fund. obsessed with cosmetic issues and ignore the real issues. issues. Fast in, fact, in fact, a lot of your rules, rules don't, make, don't sense. make sense. I remember, I remember being, being on the Mersey, Mersey Rail, Rail traveling, traveling to Pospi. I, I was tired. I put, I put my feet up. I did not, I did not know. know. You cannot, you cannot put your feet up <laughs> on the Mersey Rail. They find me. Do any of you know the fine? If they, if they catch you with your feet up on the Mersey Rail, it's 80, it's 80 quid! <laughs> 80 quid! Oh my god! I, I checked! Do you know what the fight is for public indecency? 50 quid. 50 quid. <laughs> you are better off wanking on the train. <laughs> Okay, ladies and gentlemen, the reason why I showed that and the reason why I played that was for the benefit of every single one of you who watch my channel. You see, there are a lot of people who get offended because I have antics, I make all kinds of jokes about so many people. <laughs> anyway, and because I do that, there are some people who are not used to it. It's not that they can't stand it. They're just not used to it. They're not used to information being given in such a format. Well, let me help you out, homie. And, and, and senorita. <laughs> Y'all got you hurt so. Anyway, let me help you out, Mrs. and Mr. I am so sensitive. You can't say nothing to me without it offending me because I get offended at everything. I got offended at being offended. Can you actually imagine that? I got offended at just being offended because that's what I do. I make my living off of being offended. You want to offend me? Just say something to me. And if you really want to offend me, then don't say nothing to me and watch and see how offended I get. D. I D D I D. Let's just put it this way. Did did D I D D I D. Did if you do. Did if you don't. I can't say the first did, but you know what I'm saying. Did did. Ladies and gentlemen, you can't please everybody. And so I choose not to please nobody, and that way everybody can be upset. See, I'm an equal opportunist. But to get a little serious, the young man, when he spoke about the paratroopers and the paraplegics and the army, and I thought that was hilarious. You talk about a play on words. That was all right. And left, I mean, right, 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 right. Hey, he did all right. And I don't think the only people who would have been offended would have been the individuals who have taken their disabilities a little too seriously. It is um, interesting. I'm going to show you guys. I just, there, there is a lot going on, but I just want to show you one thing. I'm going to show you if my system will allow me, because sometimes it don't want to allow me. I'm going to show you, and I don't know why I can't think of the number. Ah. <sighs> Let's 
sorry, I should know it. It's in Psalms, but my problem is I can't think of it right now because I wasn't planning on doing this. That's why it wasn't already open. No. Uh. No, that's not. No. I'm going to have to do it this way. And I'm going to have to. Give me a second. I'll find it. I apologize. Psalms 41.3 says, Jehovah will sustain him on a sick bag. Sick, 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 sick bed. During his sickness, you will completely change his bed. You notice, and a lot of people who've read this understand that he is not promising to cure that individual during this time period. For I said, Jehovah, show me favor, heal me, for I have sinned against you. Says that he will sustain him. Ladies and gentlemen, I have people wanting to show their best interests. Tell me about these cures. One person recently sent me some information about a cure for muscular dystrophy. <laughs> and the cure they sent me was some research into dogs and dogs having muscular dystrophy. And after they gave them this injection, because it's an RNA, yes, it alters the DNA. That's it's an RNA, uh, mRNA. Yup, and it worked on the dogs. They can leap and jump. I have no proof that those, pay attention, are the same dogs. Sorry, dogs are born in litters. And Dogs look alike. So we have no proof that those are the same dogs because the before and after, all we see is before and after. We don't know. What we do know is the company that produced the compound, it's not a drug, it's a compound, it's an RNA, it's gene manipulation. Back in 2009, when they first did the first interview, 2009, pay attention to the date, 2009, it's now 2022, 2009, it's now 2022, relatively speaking, and no other reports on this compound. So, when I said that there is no cure for muscular dystrophy, I meant that. Dogs and humans, Dogs and humans. I know she's a dog. Oh, he's just nothing but a dog. I can't stand him. Just because you refer to humans as dogs doesn't mean that humans and dogs have anything in common. The genetic makeup between a dog and a human are nowhere near the same. I apologize. The fact that they're testing muscular dystrophy drugs on dogs and not chimpanzees, which are closer to humans, or mice, is amazing. So, ladies and gentlemen, I only say this because the God I serve, his name is Jehovah, and he has sustained me. No matter how bad I feel, and lately I've been feeling horrible. Fall into winter, or excuse me, summer into fall, and winter into spring. It's for a period of about three to four weeks that I end up feeling horrible. And it is a barometric issue. I've been going through this since I was a teenager. Okay? Most of the time I didn't tell anybody about it, but they could. Especially my mother. My mother could look at me and see I wasn't feeling very well. And she would ask me what was wrong. And I would tell her my favorite response. Nothing. Okay. But she knew something was wrong. She had no idea. They knew. My father knew. When we went to the doctor, we knew I had a muscle disease. We just didn't know which one. And so they knew something was wrong. You know, uh, muscular dystrophy, the side effects of muscular dystrophy, it usually happens in men, boys, males. And it usually is diagnosed after the parents notice the child falling all the time. Uh, people think it's clumsiness. It has nothing to do with clumsiness. It has nothing to do with coordination. It has everything to do with the muscles. 
and the the communication of the muscles with the brain and the rest of the body, especially involving the legs, the feet. Okay? Go and do your research. You'll find that to be the case. I didn't know at first. I had to do my research when they did the muscle biopsy and diagnosed it for a certainty. And it was a muscle specialist who did so. <clears throat> Excuse me. The reason why I'm mentioning this to all of you is because I've been telling you guys about the solar panels and telling you guys about hooking them up and everything and everything is, hey, solar panels, it's a job in and of itself, but once you get it going, it's going. Um, ladies and gentlemen, the getting down on the floor, I even had to put some tile in, as I mentioned to all of you in the restroom and the hallway, and I'll be doing the rest of the living area in the kitchen momentarily. And I have a way that I'm going to be laying it down that I've not done before. Thought about it, but I've not done it before. And it looks like it's going to work out. So I'm about to put my tile down that way from this point forward. And I'll let you know how it turns out. And once I see how it turns out, then I will take photos and show it to everybody. Yay! Anyway, being on the floor and getting up from the floor... I've been having the most difficult times. Well, what most of you don't understand, and I'll explain it to you. One of the other telltale signs of muscular dystrophy is an individual having a hard time of getting up from the floor or getting up from a lying position. And that's been the case with me for quite a while. I was going through this the last couple of weeks more extensively than before did not realize until I was going over some information about muscular dystrophy about the fact that I've been complaining because it's been a chore getting up from the floor so much that I hate doing it. Well, the specialist that I went to see in 2008, she was a specialist at the University of New Mexico. She actually got yelled at because she asked me to get on the floor and to stand back up and I looked at her and she if you could not have imagined me getting to the point of wanting to curse somebody out and it being shown in my face, she understood my anger. I had no problem with her diagnosing me right after she got the muscle biopsy. She had no more uh, tests or anything else to run after that because I told her how painful that is. And yes, I, I can do it. It's just that's why they end up in wheelchairs, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. There, there are that reason and others. Uh, I am not as bad off as other people with muscular dystrophy, and that's because, as far as my doctors were concerned, I am one of the first people in history to have two forms of muscular dystrophy. Technically, that's not exactly true. What the doctors are afraid to admit is that many people have more than one form of muscular dystrophy because muscular dystrophy, uh, whether you have... Duchenne's, Becker's, or uh, what is it? Uh, dang it, why can't I think of that one? It starts with an M, and it's like, it's not mono, but uh, can't think of the name right now. But whether you have any of those or the other forms of muscular dystrophy, you notice that the symptoms are pretty much the same. Well, in my case, with the three muscular diseases that they've diagnosed so far, it appears that they're competing against each other. You know, one of them is trying to take over and the other one is saying, I, I, I get back over here. I'm the crab at the bottom of the barrel. You got to come back down here with me and let me get a chance to get on up there. I got to have my opportunity. And the other one is saying, oh, no, I, I, you can't get no opportunity without me having an opportunity. Get on back down here. And so crabs in a barrel. Okay. I'm explaining that to some of you. Because some of you need to know. So when I tell you I don't want your remedies, I don't want your cures, I don't want your information, don't do it again. Okay? It is, I trust the God that I serve. He has sustained me. He has promised to do that. He has not promised to cure me. 
And as I said, there is no cure, and no, I'm not willing to take some compound or concoction that somebody's experimenting with. I don't care if it will prolong somebody's life 185 years. Okay, don't want to hear about it. Thank you. I do appreciate you guys mining my privacy. And <sighs> let me get back. The person who sent that wasn't one of my people. Okay, see, my people wouldn't do that because my people already know not to do it. So the person who sent that definitely wasn't one of my people. All right, I got some things to talk to you guys about. You guys ready? Not, not going to be no music this time. And we probably won't be showing any websites. We're just going to talk. We're going to talk about taxes. Then I'm going to tell you about a young lady who has contacted me. And the problem is, as I told, she asked a question. She has a, an estranged ex. And she has a child by that ex. And that child is now an adult. And that ex has not paid child support. Been ordered by the court to pay child support and has not paid an ounce of child support to help support his child. Now, as I told you, all of you, the state is responsible for the child support. Nobody recognizes that. However, I want you all to pay attention. This is what I told her. Because, see, I wasn't prepared for the question at the time. But because I wasn't looking at it from the angle of the mother, I was looking at it from the angle of the person they were calling a deadbeat, whether it was a mother or the father, but usually the father, because I was often getting this information from fathers. And so they asked me, what can I do? And they said, I want to pay for a consult, but I just need to make sure you can help. I said, well, first of all, you don't need a consult. All you need to do is recognize that you and your son are creditors. And all you need to do is document the debt. Send that mother a 1099-C saying, hey, mother, we forgive you. And take the amount that he owes, file your taxes, and put that amount. Because he doesn't just owe that to your son. He owes that to the two of you now. So you can both forgive him because you're both part of the contract. And you can charge him interest. The fact is, he owes about $100,000 according to the paperwork. So, if they did the 1099-C, sent them the 1099-B, they could essentially file their taxes the correct way and get things done. Now, there are other things that that person can do to make sure that that other individual understands. Because you talk about garnishing wages. Look, social security number is all you need. And you can get the state to do that. All you have to do is get a court order. So she'll have to sue him in court, which is simple. And she gets a garnishment. And she can garnish his wages for the rest. And there's nothing he can do about it. No matter what state he's in, that judgment is the judgment. Okay? It's recognized in every state of the union, every court. I know there are many of you who are in the same situation, and I'm sorry for you individuals who are fathers, who are mothers, who are the ones on the receiving end of these orders from the court. But this is just the way it is. That's why the state goes after your wages and garnishes your wages when you owe child support. Well, the mother and son get to do the exact same thing as the state. Okay, and they get to do an offset with the Internal Revenue Service. That was what I told the young lady in an email. And it appears that she still wants a consult. Now, see, I told the person that that's too much information to be giving uh, to explain everything, that they'll have to do their own research. And other than that, they'll have to request a consult. So she's requesting a consult. That's one. Spoke to a gentleman today. He requested a consult on Wednesday. But instead of just doing a consult, because, ladies and gentlemen, many people don't understand what a consult is. It is you 
tell somebody what a situation is and you ask them for their level of so-called expertise in what they would do to resolve the situation. Now, here's the thing. If a person is not going to tell you what they would do to resolve a situation and they have expertise in that area, then you don't need to be listening to them. Attorneys won't tell you what they would do. No, what they tell you is what you should do. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not going to put myself in jeopardy, so why am I going to tell you to do something to put yourself in jeopardy? When I've told people about the hour style money orders, I've shown you proof that I've used the hour style money orders. I just spoke with someone yesterday. He and I had a conversation about the hour style money order, and I told him straight out, oh, this is the same guy who got the ticket uh, dismissed because he filed the, and you guys saw when I created it. It's a literally the right to travel with an arbitration clause. Love that piece of junk document. Well, he filed that with the court. Next thing you know, no more case. Okay. Now I, I, I'll say it again. Just because it worked for him doesn't mean it's going to work for you. You have to do your research and you have to understand your circumstances. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, the individuals who are asking for a consult, all I'm doing is giving you options. My thing, the biggest burden on me is I have to give you more than four options. You see, I can't just give you one or two options. I give you the, the, the best options, but then I give you other options to go with that so that you are not stuck. Now, many people, some of the options they don't want to do. Why? Because it's too much work. Well, the gentleman who I talked to this morning, I said, how much is your home worth? Well, originally I paid. I didn't ask you what you did originally. I said, how much is it worth? Then I had to tell him I'm very specific when I speak. So if I ask you a question, just answer my question. Don't answer whatever question you had going on in your head. So he eventually told me $200,000. said, fine. Your property is worth $200,000. So in order for you to make $200,000, and you can, the only thing you need to do is a little bit of research, probably 20% worth of work, or 10%, $20,000 worth of work. That's it, $20,000 worth of research. Just sitting there and doing the research and taking in the knowledge and not doing anything else, not watching football games, basketball games, not watching soap operas or that TV series that you can watch at any time, okay, that you can watch at any time. That's why I got the Pirate Bay back. <laughs> I can watch whatever show I want to whenever I feel like it. Now, I don't need the Pirate Bay because I watch a lot of television on my cell phone now. I didn't watch television on my cell phone. I used my phablet, but now I'm getting kind of used to the cell phone. And all I do is I type in Disney Plus mod dot APK, and I get a mod version. It's not even the Disney Plus Plus. It's a mod version of just about every show out there, and it has a VPN feature. Not just Disney Plus. You do uh, Apple TV mod or Netflix mod dot APK, and you'll pull up all the different APKs. It's, technically, it's the same APK. Okay, it's the same mod. It's the same access, but it works. Been doing it for six months now. I'm, you know, I've actually gotten into a show called Bosch. At first, when I saw it, I'm like, I can't deal with this show. This doesn't look good. But I'm sorry. I like the stupid show Bosch. Uh, some of the acting is taking a little... Because Milo from The Wire is in Bosch. And I was expecting him to <laughs> be like Milo. He's almost that character because Bosch is The Wire on methamphetamine. You see, the wire was the shield on crack. Well, Bosch is the wire on methamphetamine. That's the best way I can explain it. But I've gotten into Bosch. 
And that one I can watch because I'm watching it on Amazon Prime. I have an Amazon Prime account. All right, let's get back to this explaining about this credit and the filing of your taxes. Oh, no! There's a boogeyman! Everybody's so afraid to file their taxes. Oh, Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, I filed my taxes, but because I didn't include the 1099 C's, they said, hey, we need more information. I'm like, what the? Y'all ain't getting nothing. Now I got to give them more information. I will. And that's what I'm working on right now. Now, what I've decided, and this is the scale of hate. This is this young man. But what I've decided, let me see. I know it's up here. Is it here? I think this is it. I'm not sure. But, ah, this is high tech. Hot, I man, it's so high tech. I believe I'm going to order this product. I don't know how much it is, and I got to find out how much it is, but it doesn't tell me how much it is. It says, what is your business? Uh, <laughs> T-I-N-G. It's accounting. Oh, I said N-G. I'm saying ing in my head, but my fingers are typing something different. That's because of distractions. And let's see, 631-533-6683. The same number underneath the videos. And we put e e e e o n and we're going to put Uh-oh. Ladies and gentlemen, what city? Uh, yeah, why not? No, I don't want to put that one. Let's put... Oh, Socorro. I know I spelled Socorro wrong. I know I spelled it wrong because I ain't spelled Socorro in a while. I knew, it was, I, I knew it was the C, but I wasn't sure. No, I don't want to subscribe to your newsletter. Sorry. I, need, I just need to see what's the price. And so I could have done all that off screen, but the idea was let you guys see the process. Your download will start automatically in 10 seconds. I already have the download. I need the billing. How can I purchase billing software license? Okay. It's not telling me how to purchase, ladies and gentlemen. Paid version also available with lifetime validity. Okay, but where? Where is the paid version? Why don't you read? Simply go to our pricing page and select the business edition and fill out the purchase form. Oh, I could have just read that pricing right here. Pricing. I'm going to go to pricing. I thought you said you wasn't going to do no internet, that you weren't going to show. Would you shut up and leave me alone? I told you, don't you can't hold me to my word. I only hold me. You better. You... Go ahead, say something else. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. Let's find out what's going on with these items. Unlimited, unlimited. Number of clients allowed, unlimited. Number of staff allowed, unlimited. Oh, Lord. It's all unlimited. Pricing? See, I don't know what this equates to in dollars. And that's, I, I did see the 4000 the other day. Okay, so let's do this. We're going to do this, which means that it's going to be over $200. Okay, we're going to go Google. Google? Google. What's Google going to do? Google is going to get some mouthwash so it can Google. <sighs> Rupees! It's, it's considerably, is a considerably good amount. You can live two months with it. Uh, not, that's not my, I need to know what it equates to. We're not doing 8,000. So we're doing 4,000. Come on now. 
and we need to do US dollars. There you go, right there at the bottom. And we'll see. That way everybody get to see at the same time, then I'll go back to talking about taxes. So give me, what what does it equate to? Come on now. Uh, oh, is that euros? No, that's, I didn't ask for euros. Did anybody see me ask for euros? Oh, because I did that. It didn't do that. I did that. I When I went and selected, it had it in euros. So what I need to do is get back here because that symbol right there is the rupees. It's rupees? It's like roofies? No, rupee, rup, rup, it is not roofies, okay? Well, I don't know. It seems like somebody getting, without them knowing about it, would you just stop? See, there we go. That's the one I want. That's what I want. That's what I want. That's what I want. That's what I want. Want, 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 want. That's what I want. That's what I want. Da, da, da. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to stop this because I don't need this. I already have this, so we're just going to remove that. And we're going to wait for this to come up. The reason why I am going to locate this. Now, this thing took me to Google Maps. What the it took me to Google Maps for, I don't understand. They ain't nothing about this being Google Maps. I'm not trying to locate where something is. Lord have mercy. Give me a second so I can get this right. I'm going to say something, ladies and gentlemen, and this is going to not sound right to anybody who is from India who will listen to what I'm about to say. And so I apologize to anybody from any other country whom this is a lot of money. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not really a lot of money. It's about $53. Okay. That's the exchange. At least that's what I pulled up here. And I'm going to tend to believe. Okay. Because I'm going to click on this. Now, I see the... And see... I would love to be in a place like India because they have that many people and their money is so undervalued. And that's because of mismanagement. And again, that's why companies hired me in the past is to increase revenue. And the banks do it. A lot of people disagree with what the banks did in 1933. They overdid it and they knew they overdid it. What you do is because the value is, whoo, that's, that's like 30 to 1. Uh, because the value is so much less, what you do is you take a percentage out of the circulation. Yes, yes, yes. You will cause a little bit of inflation at the very beginning, but that inflation will go away. The value of your currency will go up. And the only thing the government has to do so that it doesn't hurt the poorer individuals who don't have access to money, they take the percentage that they just took out of circulation and they associate that with the credits they extend to the public and they provide that as a social benefit to the public. And then they do what this country was claiming it was doing. Then it allows the pay attention the public who can work, to actually work for the government, not to work for private industry. There are a lot of things that need to be done by the government. Uh, Biden is talking about infrastructure. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm not a fan of any politician. 
sorry. They don't deserve my appreciation. But what I will tell you is infrastructure is the number one thing. If you take the people and you put them to work in the infrastructure and you pay them for working on the infrastructure of the country and you train them, this is what they did in the 1930s and 40s and 50s. That's how this country came back from the brink the first time. India has way too many people and it can do the exact same thing. India can become China in no time. The only problem is India don't want to become China because they hate China. India should be looking at China because India can improve its economy without missing a beat. Well, anyway, it didn't call, I mean, we didn't do this video to talk about that. But yes, I will be buying this. Okay. Indian rupee. I will be buying the uh, software that I told you guys about. But I, I mentioned I was going to buy that software. And the only reason why I'm interested in, you don't have to do this. Okay. You don't have to do this. You don't have to purchase the same software. Okay. You don't have to purchase the same software. You can purchase any one of the other softwares. I'm doing it for my reasons. Okay? Hold on. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. Payment was successful. I was going to show it to you, but the screen changed. See, confirmed. Okay, got to pause you again. Okay, because there's a lot of fraud that goes on between countries. My system sent me a text message saying, hey, did you make this payment? Just text us yes. I said, yes. It said, good, glad to hear it was you. Came from my bank. I said, go ahead and try it again. Because they declined it at first. They had to make sure it was me. Ladies and gentlemen, it is $53 and some odd cents. To me, that's worth it because of what I need to use it for. Okay, but remember, it only has India stuff in it. That's why I say many of you may not want to do what I'm about to do, and I'm not going to show you how to do what I'm about to do because what I'm about to do is for me. And I don't, I'm tired of people trying to be me. You got to be yourself. Just be yourself. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, give me one more second. Let me check to see if the email came. Now, I'm sorry, I'm just not ready to show you guys the number for activating. I'm about to activate the product. I'll be right back. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I they sent the number and everything immediately, so it wasn't a scam or anything. So this is me letting you know. This is, uh, for India, supposedly one of the more reputable companies. From what I from what I heard, see, I don't, I'm not from India. I don't know. Um... Uh, but I am going to tell you, out of all the software that I've been looking at, I'm impressed with this one. Okay, like I said, it will allow me to do the write-off in the software so I don't have to do the extra math. It will do the accrual method for me. That's why I'm doing it. Now, many of you are going to want to jump out there and buy it. Look. Ladies and gentlemen, that's your risk. I haven't looked at the software, but I was willing, willing to go through, and I must be crazy standing in this place. Uh-oh. Something went wrong with the processing. Activation request. Invalid serial number product key. We're searching the computer frequently. Antivirus is blocking the license activation. Oh, no. It's the antivirus. Hold on. Let me take care of that. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to go ahead and finish this video. What's happening is the place in India where this is located, it's 1 o'clock in the morning. So I can't call them because my internet connection is not fast enough to go through the activation process. I've run into that problem with Dragon Naturally Speaking and other products, so I will give them a call. And it is English. The number is all English. 
what most people don't realize that in India, at least 60% of the population speaks English. <laughs> Believe it or not. So I uh, wasn't afraid to call them knowing that somebody would be speaking English. So the uh, voice, oh, and I called them a Google Voice. It's one cent a minute when you use Google Voice. Google Voice, one six a minute. I, I don't even think it's called Google Voice anymore. It's just called Voice. Okay. So I used Google Voice to call, and it's one cent a minute. So my internet connection right now is horribly slow. And so this will take some time for it to finish. So I was going to let it take care of itself. And you know what? It's got my whole screen taken over. It's just taking over. Trying to get over. Trying to get over. Ah, 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 ah. Super fly. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, it won't show my desktop. It's saying, you ain't doing nothing, homie. So we just going to let that stay in the background. If y'all don't mind, we, oh, you know what? Yeah, I got to start my, uh, I got to start my software because the, the problem is what had happened was it gave the hint that it could have been my antivirus that was denying access. And so I said, well, fine, I'll turn off the antivirus, uh, the, the, the internet blocking and everything and just monitor the system. And so it, it ain't that. All right. Here's the problem with everybody in your taxes. What's happening is most of you have been told so, so many things. Sorry about that. Most of you have been told so, so many things about how to do taxes, how not to do taxes. So because we have time to wait, let's go ahead and go here. <sighs> I know you I know you working. I know I got over 1447 days left. Leave me alone. Uh net. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, gross income versus net income. You see it on your checks all the time. Now, I want you to pay attention. Your net income is after your gross income on your checks. Why? because they're using an accounting software. They're using the accrual method. So glad you guys gave me the opportunity of explaining that to you. Because they're using an accounting software, there is nothing to say that their accounting is accurate. Well, no, that's exactly what it is. It, it's accurate, it ain't correct, it's accurate. It's not accurate, it's accurate. Exactly. So it's not correct, it's accurate. Almost sounds the same, but it ain't the same. So ladies and gentlemen, what you must realize is that your income is the monies you take in, not the total gross. Did you notice that? Gross profits and net income. What is the difference? Let's find out what's the difference, do you mind? Oh, no. Oh, I put gross. <laughs> oh, how did I hit that E? It's right above the S. That's why I do that all the time. I'm going to take care of most multiplicity. This is where you use two separate computers. I'll be taking care of you multiplicity later. I, I have that software. I just haven't put in the key code. And no, I paid for that software. I'll have you know. Gross profits refer to a company's profits earned after subtracting the cost of producing and distribution of products. Hold on now. I want you all to pay attention. Companies don't take care of their profits until after they subtract the cost of living, the cost of operation. You are supposed to be doing the exact same thing. 
if companies don't have to document their earnings, their income, until after they deduct the cost of business or doing business, you don't have to do the opposite. You've been doing the opposite. You've been subtracting things at the end instead of at the beginning. They're doing it at the end. So it's not the total amount that the company made that year. It's the total amount of profits. You're being taxed on your profits, your commercial gains. Net indicates net income indicates a company's profits after all of its expenses have been deducted from revenues. Pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. You are supposed to be doing the same thing the businesses do. Your net income is the profits after all of your expenses have been deducted. You have to deduct the cost of living. You guys have been letting these tax preparers and tax agents do it wrong. Now, did you know that I'm officially a tax preparer? Certified by the IMA AMA ESMA. Okay? I did that purposely because when I say this, I'm saying this based on, I got the credentials to say it. So let me say it again. Those of you who have not been deducting your cost of living and your mortgages from your taxes, you've been doing it wrong. You've been paying too much. You need to correct the last seven years of tax filings and get your money back. Look, I know some of you should know how to do taxes and you can help people do their taxes and get their money back and you can make a meaningful earning without overcharging people. If you're gonna help them get their monies back, 10% is perfect. Anything over 10%, you don't deserve a dime, ignorant mother. And that 10% should be capped. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're getting $200,000 back, that means that that person will be getting $20,000. That 10% should be capped at $10,000. Why? because they don't deserve more than that for helping you do your taxes. And if they're gonna help you do your taxes, then they're gonna accept responsibility for the filing of the taxes. Don't let nobody do your taxes without accepting responsibility for the arithmetic. That's why you go to a CPA. CPA accepts responsibility for the filing. All right. I'm glad that I was able to show you guys that without going into all the detail and everything. Now, by the way, do you know that the IRS says that for you, you don't get to do it that way? Do you know that they say that in their publications? But I'm telling you what the law says, not what they say. Your expenses are not profits. Your expenses are not gains. That's monies you're spending and sending out. So when you're doing your taxes, you have to do it after you do all the deductions. After you do all of that, then you do your taxes. Why do you think you receive a refund? Most of you won't receive a refund. Why? Watch this. P-O-V-E-R-T-Y-L-E-V-E-Uh-Oh. I, I, I know, uh-oh, it wasn't supposed to be going to Investopedia. I didn't ask you that. Get on out of here. Lord, hold on. P-O-V-E-R-T-Y-L-E-V-E-L. -E -E United States. That's what I want. I want to know what's the poverty level of the United States. Asked some people this the other day. The official poverty rate in 
2020, I didn't ask for the poverty. I did. You know, I said level. Um, let's do it that way. Nope, that didn't get it either. Watch this. He is one, uh oh, one, two, comma, five, zero, zero. Let's put the dollar sign here. Let's get rid of that dollar sign there. And let's get that into sign there. Okay. Well, look at that. A family of one is $12,800. If you got, pay attention, y'all. If you got two children, or two people, sorry, you and your wife, $17,000 is the poverty level. If you got three people, you, your wife, and a knucklehead, then that's what it is. Ladies and gentlemen, after your expenses, if you don't have $12,800 left over, you don't get taxed, you know, because you fall below the poverty line. And I know many of you don't know this, and that's so devastating. Because the reason why you don't know this is because you never bothered to do your own research. You never bothered to check. You never bothered to question. I am glad I had people like Maxine Waters go over taxes with me. She had a school. That school is still there today. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what they're doing at that school today. But when I went to her school, WLCAC, when it was just getting started, I think it was like the second, third year. When I went to that school, they taught us how to do our taxes. Okay? So let me tell you, after my expenses, that's why I ain't never had to pay taxes, people. After my expenses, I did not qualify to pay taxes. I was not required to pay taxes. Because of my being below the poverty level, I was not required. Do you know that many of you will fall below the poverty level? But you're still going to need to get a return when you do your taxes the correct way. When you deduct all of your expenses and what's left over is your income. Go ahead, let somebody bring me to court. I will testify. Bring me to court. I would love to have somebody argue this with me. I would love to have somebody tell me that I can count my expenses as part of my income. Do you guys understand the logic behind that? So let me show y'all something. Let me show you something. We're almost done. Cause now I gotta wait. I gotta look, I'm digging a trench. Um I'm digging a trench. And the trench that I'm digging is for my water tank. And I have to dig 20. I'm doing 20 inches into the ground. I am not doing 19. I'm doing 20. I probably will end up doing 24 inches when I put this pipe under the ground. It's the freeze level, isn't it? You better believe it is. <clears throat> Sorry, I had to cough. Let me correct that gross. Because, oh, that's gross. That's, that's, that's why I corrected it. Because I didn't want it to be more gross than what it was. Gross profits refer to a company's profits. Well, aren't you filing as a company? Aren't you filing as a company? So gross filings refer to a company's profits earned after subtracting the cost of producing and distributing its products. So after its cost of doing business or living. So watch this.
That was the gold claws. You know, I want to keep that one. Hold on. All right, we can we can do that because this is the uh, the Adams case, basically on the same stuff. But we're gonna uh oh, get back over there. Hold on, y'all. Ah, it's coming. Hold on. Have you ever leaned on me? Come on now. And because I'm getting ready, I have to put together a couple of motions. So, because I'm getting ready to do that, go out and finish digging this trench. See, it did it again. And I can't stand uh, case text when it does that. Because y'all saw me. Hold on. Y'all saw me paste that in there and hit that. And it decided it didn't want to keep what I put. So, it'd be one second, ladies and gentlemen. Net profits is what remains in the conduct of a business or product line after deducting from its total receipts all of the expenses incurred in carrying on the business or product line. You got to remember the taxpayer is an entity and after its expenses, watch this. Okay, watch this. Got to get rid of this right here. Hold on now. Get on out of here. What you doing? Okay, I put cost of living expenses. Let's see what we get. I'm interested. Aren't y'all interested? Net income means the net profit or loss, including rental income from tenants that would have been earned or incurred before taxes. Now, it says earned before taxes. That's not what net income means, ladies and gentlemen. Okay? See, business income as net income plus continuing expenses. The plaintiffs have shown that there was a loss in business income due to the suspension of their operation. The policy defines business income as net income. Okay, that's not individual. Uh, gross income is defined as gross receipts minus enterprise, ordinary and necessary expenses. The plaintiff argued that income implies a gain which in turn implies that taxes are based on gross income, less allowable deductions for costs. The plaintiff argues, 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 argues. Ladies and gentlemen, you don't argue. You tell them what the law is. Okay? You don't argue. On the other hand, it reflects a purpose that tax income spent by individuals for their ordinary cost of living. I want to go there. I want to go there. I want to go there. I want to go there because this is the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. I want to go there. Let's do that. The provisions in Section 23A1A, allowing deductions for ordinary and necessary business expenses of the entire amount spent for meals and lodging while away from home in a pursuit of a trade or business involved the practical legislative. Would you get on out of here? You see me working? Sorry, ladies and gentlemen. This is a zip extractor. So we're going to let the extractor do what the extractor do. Okay, because it's doing a software update. See? Doing that update. All right. So we're going to keep that in the background and keep this in the foreground. Ladies and gentlemen. The entire amount spent for lodging mills while away from home in the pursuit of a trade or business involved a practical legislative compromise on two basic purposes. Why? On the one hand, the Internal Revenue Code reflects congressional purpose to permit deduction of gross income of ordinary and necessary business expenses 
On the other hand, it reflects the purpose of tax income spent by individuals for their ordinary cost of living. It reflects the purpose to tax income spent by individuals for their ordinary cost of living. Compare Internal Revenue Code 1939, 33 Section 1A, the Internal Revenue Code to 24A1, as the district court said, Congress did not exempt the usual living expenses for taxpayers. We all share the burden equally. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a lie. Congress don't get to choose whether or not you are charged for your living expenses. The Constitution has already set aside your living expenses. Your right to live is a secured right. And your right to live, to be taxed on that, means that Congress is taxing you on your right to live. Impossible. Sorry, y'all. I got to answer this. One second. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I apologize. I turned the uh, volume off on that because I've been speaking on the phone for the last couple of hours. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen, ladies, ladies and gents, we're going to get back to this. This is adoption expenses. This is the section the court was referring to. Let's find out what is a qualified adoption expense. Qualified adoption expenses. The term qualified adoption expenses means reasonable and necessary adoption fees, court costs, attorney's fees. Now, I want to tell you why we looked up adoption expenses. Do you really want to tell us? No, I don't want to tell you nothing, but I'm going to. What if we don't want to listen? Then you get on out the door. Go on now. But I'm in my own house. I don't give up. Ladies and gentlemen, what I did is I, in adopting what is now this, pay attention. I want, I want you all to pay attention. It is difficult for a taxpayer to show how much the actual cost of his food and lodging exceeded what the cost would be or would have been had he not been traveling from far away from home on business and adopting what is now Section 23A1A. Congress rejected early efforts of the Treasury Department to impose erroneous burdens upon the taxpayer. Ladies and gentlemen, let me help you all out so you understand what's going on. This is so they wouldn't double burden a person, charge them twice. That's why they were allowed to have those expenses in business. Let me explain to you what's going on with the taxpayer. The taxpayer is a business because he's being charged taxes because he's conducting commerce. Do you understand that there's no difference between a taxpayer and a taxpayer? A business is a taxpayer and an individual is a taxpayer. But there are several different classifications and several different tax structures for each. Yes, but if they get the write off their expenses, so do you. It's called equal protection of law. Watch this. Thus, out of practical necessity, Congress freed from taxation income spent on personal living expenses while on business trips. Did you see that? This is what the court says. This discriminates against taxpayers whose businesses do not require travel and who therefore pay taxes on all of the income which they devote to personal living expenses. The discrimination may be substantial. Remember I told you about equal protection? By all, all means, understand, I didn't read this before. I've been away from the computer the whole time. That's why if you notice, I started it out with ladies and gentlemen because I forgot where I left off. Equal protection of law. It discriminates. Equal protection of law does not come from the 14th Amendment. It comes from the Declaration of Independence. 
A salesman may be allowed to deduct the total amount spent on meals and lodging during all but a few days of the year. It is not surprising, therefore, that Congress did not allow the deduction of this total algonum of personal living expenses and business expenses in every situation involving business travel. The total cost of meals and lodging is made deductible only when the travel is also away from home. The reason for the selection by Congress of this particular limitation seems fairly clear. No? Uh-uh. Not, not what it seems like. And suggests the meaning intended by the phrase as a whole, in particular of the word home. As we have suggested, expenditures, now let me do this for you guys. Let me do this for you guys. I'll take care of that in a minute. Sorry, CISE. Uh, it is, I, I've been out there digging a trench as well because I'm putting in a 500 gallon water tank and I have to dig a trench 24 inches deep as I mentioned before and it's gonna be about a good 60 feet long so that's a lot of work and it's just me and again I have a disease that deals with fatigue several of them you said right several of them that's what I said wrong right wrong right wrong right 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 Whoa, stop, stop expanding. Mother, sorry. It's Google. Ladies and gentlemen, want you all to pay attention. Even if it were regarded as an excise tax, the law is that the individual right to live and own property are natural rights for the enjoyment of which an excise cannot be imposed. Your right to live, your cost of living cannot be taxed, ladies and gentlemen. The mere right to hold and own such property cannot be made subject to an excise. That's why Uniform Commercial Code Article 9, Section 102 and 109 clearly says that household good consumer goods used not for commercial gain but for personal use can not be taxed. It is exempt. They don't have any control over your personal property. Your automobile is your car. You're not operating it in commerce. You are driving and traveling. You can use the word drive. It's okay. As long as you're not operating the motor vehicle for commerce. Although the legislature cannot limit the right, a right given by the Constitution, it may surely impose conditions on privileges granted by itself. The 14th Amendment. Better, better pay attention, but it may not be a statute curtail the right, may not by statute curtail a right or nor place any undue burden upon its exercise, the exercise of a secured right. Remember, you don't have constitutional rights, ladies and gentlemen. You have rights secured by the Constitution. Pay attention. Do not sit up there and talk about you have constitutional rights. You do not have constitutional rights. You have rights secured by the Constitution. You've heard me say that over and over again because uh, old schoolers, that's what we do. We mention your secured rights. Repeatedly, repeatedly, repeatedly. Ladies and gentlemen, this is 1933. This is not Redfield versus Fisher which happened three years prior, copy. What has changed since 1933 and now? Nothing.
There's been no amendment to the due process right to pursue happiness and the right to live. So I'm going to take that phrase. It's going to say it's too big. You can't use that's too many words, son. Uh-oh, it didn't do that. Hold on. Get out of there. We don't want no keyword search. Yeah, because I hit enter too quick. We don't want no keyword search. I done told you now. Hold on. Let me pause y'all for a sec. Told you it was going to say it was too long. Told you. It said too long. Let's get rid of this right here. Even if it's regarded. Get rid of that. The law is that an individual's right to live and own property are natural rights. The enjoyment of which, the right to pursue, the right to enjoy, of which an excise tax cannot be imposed. In other words, you cannot be taxed on your right to live, your cost of living. Pay attention. You all have the right to write that junk off. I know you didn't know. I know that somebody going to tell you, no, you don't. Okay? You take these laws and you shove it in their face. California, the rule as stated in rule case law, ruling case law, there's no such thing. Volume 26, page 238 is as follows. In most of the states, however, it is regarded as the law that an excise upon performance of an act which the legislator cannot constitutionally prohibit must be reasonable in amount. That's a lie. And must not amount to a suppression of any useful or legislative occupation or legitimate occupation or a deprivation of any natural and inalienable right. It is generally recognized that among the inalienable rights guaranteed by our Constitution to every law-abiding citizen, no, to every citizen. There is nothing in the Constitution that says the citizen has to be law-abiding in order to receive due process. Go back and take a look. It's the right to live and the right to enjoy life and the right to acquire property. Okay, this is junk that they add in because they want to leave themselves a way out. A tax on a mere right to own or have property is a property tax. Ladies and gentlemen, you're not supposed to be paying property taxes on your private property. Change on an owner of a property by reason of his ownership alone without regard to any use that might be made of it. Ladies and gentlemen, I need you guys to understand. They are charging you a use tax. It's called a usage tax. That's why you need to fill out the exemption form. All right, hold on. A tax on a mere right to own property is not, that's the same thing. <sighs> Number one, the right of a property owner to rent his property to others and to receive rents is an inherent right and attributed, uh, attribute, an attribute to ownership, which the legislature must recognize and not a privilege for which legislature may exact a license tax. If you have a property and you want to rent it out, this is saying, uh-uh, you can't charge me. Uh-uh. But you know they changed it since then, right? Okay, they changed it because of that ruling right there. The right to own and enjoy property is no higher in the Constitution than the right to liberty, constitutional sense than the right to liberty. Absolute freedom and liberty of individuals without limitations and restraint by law would result in anarchy. That's a lie. Absolute freedom and liberty to own and acquire property would ignore the police power which restrains the use of property and other. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a lie. The people ain't never gave them that right. These freedoms are absolute. That's why they're called secured rights. That's why your right to own property is absolute. Let's see. And the right to own property, uh, held under implied obligation, the use of it shall not be injurious to the community. You see, you can own property, you have the right to property as long as you don't cause injury to a member of the public. Okay? Just that simple. That's always been the law. 
Hold on, let's find another one. The right to make a living is a right inherent to the individual and no such doubt protected by constitutional provision. You have the right to live. You have the right to make a living. The result was to deny to the excluded class the right to make a living by fishing. Okay, you have the right to make a living. You have a right to earn a living. This is the stuff you need to look up, type in, send. All the ones that agree with your position, people. Property has no right. Really? However, so long as life is given to the fundamental provisions of our Constitution, individuals living in this country possess inalienable rights as to the use of their property, which means you cannot tax me on a right. Ladies and gentlemen, if it is your right, you cannot be taxed for a right. That makes it a privilege. There cannot be a tax imposed on a secured right. One of our most sacred rights granted an individual by the Constitution is the right to own and keep property, but no one can contend that such an individual cannot dispose of his property in any manner he wants to do so. Okay? The right to enjoy your own property is no more sacred than liberty. There's that very same quote again, mama. Okay? The right to own, hold, and enjoy property is nearly absolute. Actually, it is absolute. For no one can interfere with your right to own property, your private right. Okay? They only do those forfeiture laws because they're statutory. And that's where you kick them in the anus by saying, oh no, you cannot interfere with my constitutional rights. Well, you were using it for commercial reasons, and for that, now you gave us jurisdiction. Well, yeah, technically I was using it for commercial reasons, so that's right, you got jurisdiction. I see your technicality. To secure their property was one of the great ends in which men entered society. The right to acquire and own property and to deal with it and to use as the owner chooses, so long as the use harms nobody is a natural right, not a privilege. It is part of the citizen's natural liberty as expressed in his freedoms, guaranteed as inviolate by every American Bill of Rights. Ladies and gentlemen, I need you guys to understand something. Pay attention. Every American Bill of Rights. In other words, it was required in every constitution that the Bill of Rights equal the Bill of Rights of the United States Constitution. And notice this. The Constitution for Pennsylvania provides that as one of the inherent rights of mankind, all men, blah, blah, blah. Additionally, the right to enjoy one's property is not unlimited. Of course it is. The right to acquire an own property and to deal with it as one chooses, only so long as he doesn't harm anybody else, these are natural rights. It does not owe its origin to the Constitution. These are inherent rights. Ladies and gentlemen, I got FedEx coming, so y'all hold on. If I can just hit the right button. Okay, I'm sorry about that, ladies and gentlemen. That was FedEx, and they were dropping off a product. I'm going to give this company, we've had some problems with this company, but I'm going to give this company some credit. The name of the company, y'all, the name of the company that I'm going to give some credit to is called BigBattery.com. They sell some big batteries. I got a 24-volt battery, and the problem is I didn't set my charge controller correctly. So what happens is my battery drained. Well, 24 volts and 12 volts don't add up. Just don't. They don't add up, y'all. Can't charge a 24-volt with a 12-volt battery charger. So they sent me. Pay attention now, because I know this is going to be difficult for some of y'all to understand. They sent me, pay attention, a 24-volt battery charger for free. You, you, you heard what I just said, for free. So, BigBattery.com, 
I give them some credit. We've had some other issues about them delivering items on time and some respect issues, but I spoke with this one young lady and she was extremely respectable, treated me with respect. So I can now give credit to BigBattery.com. All right, ladies and gentlemen, for an hour and 25 minutes, I know, I know. Man, your videos are long because it's a lot of information. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a lot of information. Do you guys realize this? You realize how much information you're getting? These are not no simple, basic uh, issues. This is a lot of information. And so because it's a lot of information, I'm trying to give you the best that I can. Okay? I'm trying to give you the best that I can. Now, I got this inverter, but I think it might be pulling too much wattage, so I will have to turn on my generator, uh, this uh, battery charger. And it's only for 24 volt batteries, and this one is designed specifically for this battery. Okay, 24 volts designed specifically for this battery. The connections are specifically for this battery. They charge a little penny for this charger, but it's perfect for what I need it for. All right, and I would have needed it anyway. That's the unique part. So they actually did me a favor. You know what I'm saying? And they sent it for free. So I done saved myself some more money this week. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk for a second before I go.